Hello, I'm Nick from Staffordshire Wildlife Trust. I'm a freshwater ecologist and welcome to the River Churnet here. We're right in the north of the county, right up in the, the Leek Moorlands, the Staffordshire Moorlands. And this is the infant River Churnet. It actually comes rifling off the, the moorland behind us. So if anyone that knows the road from Leek going up to Buxton, it's a very steep, steep road. This is probably our most, uh, it's probably the steepest bit of uh, river catchment that we've got in, in Staffordshire. Um, got bits that come off the edges of the Roaches estate and all through those, um, it's funneled through all these sort of cloughs and gullies that come off um, almost like the north face of the Eiger coming off those, those areas here. And it's all funneled to here, just to this spot. We're within Seven Trent Waters Tittersworth estate here and we've been working on this bit of river for uh, a number of years now. But we wanted to come to this bit first to look at the, the reference conditions, some of the talking points about the ecology and the actual physical structure of the river here, which, is, which we think is very, very exciting. So as the, as the river comes down from the moorland here, you get a localised storm. It comes down almost like a wave of water, like a big fist. And the energy comes punching into features like this. So a fallen tree like this, this, this ash tree, uh, actually came down in the year 2000. So for 16 years, this tree has been across the channel here. And the actual tree itself hasn't moved. Uh, but it's had a profound influence on the river itself and on, on, the, on the habitats. The, the ash tree is still alive, and I think that's the most important feature about, about the fallen tree. It's actually doubled the width of the river, so as the, as the water comes down and hits this feature, the energy is, is dissipated uh, to the side. It actually catches a lot of the branches and, and wood that's held in suspension. A lot of the fine sediment will drop out both sides of it. And then, I'm not sure if you can see today, but underneath the, the, the branch here, you actually get bed scour, so the, 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 the depth of the river there will be deepened uh, as the water comes underneath it. And this is really important habitat for things like brown trout, um, the lamprey, brook lamprey, a very primitive jawless fish that lives in this area. They like living in silt for most of the year, but when they come out in, in the spring, April time, they need to find fresh gravel, nice clean gravel, which you've got right here. Um, so really you've got lovely conditions for certain types of, of fish. Uh, as you pan around and look at some of the other features, you've got on this side, you've got bedrock right up the side of the, um, the, the side of the river. And of course, the river is not going to be going that way anytime soon. Uh, but what you do have is you have water that comes through springs and seeps through, and you get wonderful conditions for the growth of uh, moss and liverworts. And of course, you, as a result, you'll get um, rare invertebrates that are associated with those mossy areas and those um, seepage areas. Things like rove beetles, we've got one called the waterfall beetle that lives in, in this kind of area. Um, and you'll also get sort of rare spiders and soldier flies that, that live in, in these habitats. If you look back at the, uh, the feature itself, all this saturated wood that's sort of held there, um, there are rare hoverflies that have a larval stage developing in saturated wood. Um, there's one called um, the logjammer hoverfly, we've nicknamed it the logjammer hoverfly that lives in, in this type of thing. You have the um, yellow splinter crane fly, Ellipsothrix crane fly, that also lives in these areas. And as we've done work along through this section, we're using this particular reach to mimic and copy and to inspire us basically to, to put features in further downstream that will um, provide habitat, but also take pressure off Seven Trent's infrastructure. And that's what we want to look at next. 